Hello, I'm continuing my reviews on the Godzilla series with Godzilla vs. Gigan. Now, Godzilla vs. Gigan came out in 1972, and this is the 12th film in the Godzilla franchise, and it was later released in the U.S. under the title Godzilla on Monster Island. The movie is directed by Jun Fukuda, who also directed Ebra Horror of the Deep, a.k.a. Godzilla vs. the Sea Monster and Son of Godzilla and the film is co-written by Singichi Sekuzawa, who, ever since King Kong vs. Godzilla, was basically Toho's main writer for the Godzilla series, with few exceptions. But the movie is also co-written by Takashi Kimura, who also co-wrote Destroy All Monsters and Godzilla vs. Hedora. And outside of the Godzilla franchise, he co-wrote the original Rodan movie and wrote movies like Matango and Frankenstein Conquers the World. Now, I have Godzilla vs. Gigan on VHS. I remember my uncle got this for me when I was a little kid. At the time, I had only seen King Kong vs. Godzilla and Godzilla 1985, but I was already becoming a huge Godzilla fan, and my uncle got this for me on a VHS set where it came with Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla. Now, I still have the tapes, but unfortunately I lost the case that they came in a long time ago. Now, Godzilla vs. Gigan is often considered to be one of the worst Godzilla movies ever made. The film is very maligned by fans of the franchise for its goofy story and cheap nature and obsessive use of stock footage from earlier Godzilla films. But one thing you've got to keep in mind is at the time Toho was working with an extremely low budget. Basically, Japanese television was kicking the shit out of the Japanese film industry. The Japanese film industry was also hit very hard by the gas crisis that was going on at the time. So, for the most part, these 70s Godzilla films were working with extremely low budgets. But also at this time, the Godzilla series was getting geared almost exclusively for children. And these 70s Godzilla films bear little to no similarities to Ashiro Honda's original masterpiece. And in a lot of ways, Godzilla vs. Gigan kind of epitomizes the 70s era of Godzilla. But all that being said, you know what? I fucking love Godzilla vs. Gigan. Warts and all, this is one of my top ten favorite Godzilla movies. Like, this is one of the Godzilla movies I find myself watching all the time, and unironically, like, I unironically love this movie. Is the movie cheesy? Absolutely. It's a 70s Godzilla film. This was the time when the Godzilla series was pretty much at its cheesiest. Like, I don't know, there's just something about this movie that's just so endearing, and maybe it's nostalgia because this was one of the first Godzilla movies I ever saw, but again, this is one of my favorite Godzilla films. Now, what the plot of Godzilla vs. Gigan is it follows a struggling manga artist who ends up working for a charity organization who are building a theme park for kids that's Godzilla-themed. And this organization claims to be working towards world peace, but one day the main character goes to see the chairman of this organization, and he runs into this girl trying to steal a tape from them. The tape accidentally falls into his hands. Now, they claim that this girl is some kind of a terrorist... But then this girl and her friend confront him to try to get the tape back from him, and she claims that these people are holding her brother hostage. Now, the main character was already suspicious of his employers, so him, this girl, and her friend start investigating into who these people really are. And soon it's revealed that this organization is actually a front, and the people behind it are alien cockroaches in human form who want to take over the Earth with the help of King Ghidorah and a monster known as Gigan, who is a cybernetic bird-like alien with hooks for hands and a buzzsaw on its stomach. But soon Godzilla and Anguirus come to defend the Earth from the space monsters. Meanwhile, the human characters are trying to stop the cockroaches. 
Now, while I do love this movie, even taking the economic situation in Japan at the time into account, I really can't defend how cheap a lot of the movie looks. For example, there are some shots of Gigan and King Ghidorah flying in where it's the fakest looking puppets you'll ever see in your life. Like, they weren't even remotely trying to make these things look real. And in a lot of the monster scenes, there's a lot of obvious stock footage from other films. For example, a lot of shots of King Ghidorah are taken directly from Ghidorah the Three-Headed Monster. Even some shots of Godzilla in this movie are taken directly from that film. Now, as a little kid, I never noticed that, but as an adult watching the movie, it's painfully obvious, especially because all of a sudden Godzilla looks different. And even with some of the original footage for the film, for some reason, in a lot of the shots of Godzilla in the water, they used a different suit, so all of a sudden Godzilla's head looks different. But that's all the negative I'm going to say about this movie. Yes, there are a lot of effects shots which are very cheap looking, but then there's some effects in the movie that's actually not too bad, and when they're not flying, the monsters look freaking great. Especially Gigan. Like, there's some shots of Gigan which are honestly pretty badass of him standing over burning buildings and stuff. And the actual battle at the end between Godzilla, Anguirus, Gigan, and King Ghidorah, when it's not cutting away to stock footage, it's one of my favorite kaiju fights in the entire franchise. And it actually gets pretty freaking brutal with Gigan smashing Godzilla's head in with one of his hook hands and Gigan cutting Godzilla's shoulder open with his saw blade. Or Anguirus running into Gigan's saw blade and all the blood coming out. Like, the final fight at the end is actually really freaking bloody for what's intended to be a kid's film. Now, this doesn't bother me personally because this was the first movie I saw with King Ghidorah, but I could see some people having a problem with the fact that King Ghidorah, who's considered to be Godzilla's greatest antagonist in this movie, is basically reduced to Gigan's sidekick. Now, it's worth noting that this was the last time that Hiro Nakajima played Godzilla. He was the suit actor who played Godzilla in pretty much all the films ever since the original 1954 film. And the suit actor who played Gigan is Ken Pachiro Satsuma. I probably butchered that name, but he would go on to play Godzilla in the Heisei series. Now, what also really works about this movie for me, believe it or not, is the human characters. I really like the human cast in this movie, especially the main character. I love that he's a manga artist. You don't normally see something like that in a Godzilla movie. Normally in these Godzilla movies, the main characters are usually scientists or journalists or soldiers. This is the first time where you really saw a regular, average guy being the main character of a Godzilla movie, and the fact that he does kaiju mangas, the best way I could describe this character, it's like if a Godzilla fan were the main character of a Godzilla movie. I mean, granted, you kind of had that with Achiro in Godzilla's Revenge, but this character's a lot better than Achiro. I also really liked the dynamic between him and his girlfriend, where his girlfriend really is the one wearing the pants in the relationship. Like, she's in a lot of ways almost more masculine than he is. He's a lot more feminine. And the other characters are really good, too. I love that the sister of the guy who's being held hostage by the cockroaches, her and her friend are basically hippies. And the scenes where they're investigating into the people behind this charity organization honestly play out almost like a detective film. And the cockroaches are actually pretty interesting villains and are actually kind of sympathetic if you stop to think about it. Because really, they're just looking for another home. You find out that the dominant species on the planet that they came from wiped themselves out with pollution and made the planet virtually uninhabitable, so these cockroaches, they're looking for another planet to inhabit. So, when you consider their backstory, they're actually very sympathetic villains. Even the main characters kind of sympathize with them at the end, where one of them says they did what they had to do. But 
they're also creepy, too, because they're cockroaches. Cockroaches are fucking terrifying animals. So again, I love Godzilla vs. Gigan. I know the movie has a lot of problems, but I'm willing to forgive the problems that this movie has, and I honestly think people are way harder on this movie than it deserves. And it's just a really fun Godzilla movie, and the film also has this real comic booky feel, and you also have a scene in this movie where Godzilla and Anguirus actually talk to each other. It's so freaking cheesy, but somehow it works for the movie. And maybe this is just me where my nostalgia goggles, but I honestly think the movie has a lot more going for it than people give it credit for. I mean, there's a reason one of the first Godzilla shirts I ever got was a shirt for this movie, because this seriously is one of my favorite Godzilla films. Now, Gigan would show up again in the next film in the franchise, Godzilla vs. Megalon. He would also show up on a show called Zone Fighter, which was basically like Toho's answer to shows like Ultraman. Godzilla and King Ghidorah also showed up on that show, and so did the cockroach aliens from this movie. Gigan would show up again in 2004's Godzilla Final Wars. Now, before I end this video, I want to cut to my friend Christian Feliciano, giving his thoughts on Godzilla vs. Gigan. Godzilla vs. Gigan is when I start to say, okay... It's not that they're misleading us with the titles, it's just, to me, I wish that the titles kind of explained more, because it's Godzilla vs. Gigan, but King Ghidorah's in it, and Roach Creatures are in it, and Gyrus, is how you pronounce it, is in it, and the Roach Creatures have taken over Gigan and Ghidorah, and, you know, nothing in the title says any of that. So it kind of just throws, <laughs> throws you off a little bit. And, I mean, it's fine. Don't get me wrong. It doesn't change anything. It's just, I, I don't know. I have, I have this thing for titles that always gets me. And the same thing happens to me with the X-Men films. The idea that they name it X2 instead of XM2 just really annoys me. I don't know why. I don't know what's wrong with me. There's something probably wrong with me. I don't know what it is. But I don't know if it's a form of OCD. I don't know. It's just something about titles that just gets me. But anyway, besides that, um, yes, Godzilla vs. Gigan is a lot of fun. You know, we're obviously moving even farther away from Godzilla's Revenge. I want to get as far away as possible from that film. And, you know, it stays good. It stays really, really good. And Gigan, which what I love about Gigan is that um, he's a weird creature because he's he looks like an old glad. He looks like what a creature would look like if it was a gladiator, and I don't know why. I just thought he that's really fun. Um, of course, I ret I love the return of Ghidorah. Ghidorah is like I said before. He is my favorite Godzilla villain, and anytime you put Ghidorah in the film, I just love you more for it. I I want to see Ghidorah a lot more. He is my favorite villain. If I ever wrote a Godzilla movie or comic book or novel whatever it is i'm putting Ghidorah in it so that's going to be a spoiler because at the end of that book or comic or movie there's going to be an after credit scene where a meteor lands on earth it cracks open and you just see the heads of Ghidorah pop out and yellow lightning shoot out his ass that's what you're gonna see so you know i love Ghidorah. that makes this movie a whole a whole lot better the Roach Creatures are very interesting. I love the history behind them. I love that they explain the whole history of them. Um, I thought that was really fun. And yeah, it's really great film. Really fun. Uh, I recommend anybody to watch this. This is one of the ones you can jump on. Now, yeah, at the same time, you do want to know the history of some of these characters. But if this is literally your first film, that's fine. I mean, you, you'll understand it. You'll get through it. And it, it'll interest you and make you want to watch the others so that you can know more about these other creatures and the history between Godzilla and King Ghidorah. And yeah, uh, thank you so much for everything. Bye-bye. So, I hope you enjoyed Christian's take on this movie, and that was my review on Godzilla vs. Gigan, and bye.